Ciao amici della Germania, sono Simone Bottasso, I'm from Italy, I live in the Netherlands and I play the diatonic accordion and today I'm gonna teach you a super wonderful song, dance, uh, from my region. In the northwest of Italy we have the mountains, the Alps and a lot of valleys where there are a lot of traditional and unknown, very unknown dances. That's how I started music, by playing music for dancers, the traditional songs from my, from my region. Um, in all the regions we have kind of the same dances, with different steps and different interpretation, um, like Curenta, Gigo, Cudru Danso, but um, the one I like the most is the Giga di San Front, from San Front in Val de Po, where the Po river starts from the mountain Monviso and then goes through all Italy. There they have the most wonderful dance ever. Uh, when I was a kid I used to love this song for the fact that they start like if they open a book with their hands and then they start doing these very funny steps going with the steps, one behind the other. Check it out in this video. start by singing with your voice and without the accordion a melody before learning it. And you can also clap the tempo with your hands while singing. So and go on. I'm gonna play you first a slow version of it and then in tempo. Usually this dance is played only three times, uh, it's very short, uh, but uh, if you are not playing this dance in Val de Po, then you can also play this dance longer, you can also play this as a polka, it works very well. which is the soul of our instrument. I know that you guys like to do these things. But uh, I 
think that the push and pull is really uh, bringing a lot of energy to the music, especially for the dances from uh, in North Italy. So please make sure you learn this melody with a lot of push and pull. How can you do that? Just by playing the melody in the, its uh, original form, which was supposed to play everything on one row, or almost everything in one row. Depends also on the system of keyboard you have. When you practice the push and pull, it's very important to think about the synchronicity of the fingers of the right hand, which played the melody, and the bellow, which means the left hand, and more specifically, this part of your left hand, which goes exactly here, in the center, where the two diagonals meet. Uh, that's the point where you should put your beginning of the thumb in order to have the best control of your of your bell The other thing you need to pay attention when you play push and pull is to have the same volume when you push and the same volume when you pull. So not have it like this. Or... Try to be very steady and to uh, just use the push and pull to define the note that you're gonna play and give a bit of energy and groove to your music. Let's now learn the melody. I'm gonna play you only the melody with the right hand, using as much as I can the second row, and then we will put the left hand in several ways. Uh, the easiest will be to play just harmony of C and G, not caring about what harmony happens, but following the push and pull of the melody, and then we'll try to be more specific and have the chords getting in the perfect place, and then we'll add some nice harmonies and bass lines, which will embellish your melody. So the simple melody play very slow. Now we're gonna add the left hand, just playing on the harmony of C and G. The combinement is in 2-4, so bass, chord, bass.
heard, some bases are not really good. Um, so we, what we will need to do is to try to make sure that the G is always played in the correct place uh, and that in case there is a G that is not a pulling but pushing, that we take it in the higher position here. If it's a bass or if it's a chord. Most times we always try to complete the dominant bars, so when we have the tension in the harmony, uh, using the proper G. variation we can do with the left hand is to embellish it a bit with some other chords coming from the key of the piece which is C major so we will use um, a E minor or even better a C bass E which gives them a nicer sound I believe and a F and of course the G, which is sometimes holding and sometimes pushing. For, so the first part will be done.
In the second part, I like to play a scale that is a, just a third below the melody, uh, which makes it very uh, harmonic. So, um, at the beginning of the second part, the left hand will do this scale. C, 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 B, C, B, A, D minor, G7. Then you can also invent other variation to underline this very important moment of the dance because that's where the people start turning around. Sometimes you can also change the way you play the melody according to what you want to have in your left hand to make variations. Um, remember that melodies uh, and or are not um, ways of pressing buttons but are just sounds so you can change the direction of the bello to get the same sound but in another direction that allows you to play a different harmony so for the next variation we will use a bit of crossing in order to play uh, our bass variation <laughs> Another possible variation for the second part is to play some B chords, which means playing two notes at the same time. Usually you play the second voice uh, lower with your index and you harmonize it with thirds or sixths, uh, so consonant intervals that give the sense of the harmony of the piece. In this case I'm using a tenth, a very wide interval. Now we put together this variation together with the bass line and we add a bass of B. So the bass line will be. Okay, now I'm gonna play you a last version of this song um, with uh, the melody, uh, the variations and maybe also some accompaniment. Um, I hope you liked this version of the Giga de San Front and that I will soon play this with you, wherever in the world.
música. Música.